Greetings, fellow Civ fans. My name is Forex Extraordinaire, and we have some incredible new news for the new leader pass. That is a lot of news, but we have some more information regarding a leak, and it is 99% likely that this leak is real, and it reveals all of the upcoming leader abilities as well as the leader models themselves. So I have faith that this leak is actually accurate, and I think the leader abilities are very, very promising from just taking a quick glance at them, much more so than what we recently had with the debacle that was the first release for the Great Negotiators pack, so let's talk about it and get into the spicy details. So interestingly, this actually broke first on the Civ Reddit, and they data mined these files from the update. I'm assuming they were already included with the patch for the new leaders pass. Perhaps they put them in here, but perhaps they also leaked this intentionally to get people hyped up. I think it's a 50 50 chance of either but with all of that in consideration they look a lot better and i want to talk about why they look better in my opinion and why they seem to be shaping up to be a great successor to some of the warlords that we've previously seen in civ 6. I want to start out by dissecting Tokugawa's ability, which is Bakuhan. International trade routes receive minus 25% yields and tourism, but domestic trade routes provide plus one culture and plus one science and plus two gold for every specialty district in the destination. Cities within six tiles of Japan's capital are 100% loyal and after researching flight receive plus one tourism for every district. The first thing I want to point out is that besides the fact that this ability is not very warlord oriented, it is quite nice for more passive and city building players like myself. I think the culture and science, while it seems small at first, is going to be great if you want to build and expand early on. Perhaps you're aggressively forward settling and you need some culture, that is going to be great for expanding your borders and your conquest. The second observation I really want to make about this ability in general is that it pairs very, very well with Meiji Restoration, which for those of you who are a bit rusty, it provides plus one adjacency bonuses instead of the standard 0.5 when you place a district next to another adjacent district. So this is wonderful in terms of rounding out Japan's coverage. I think Japan was already a great L bounder sieve in that it specialized in many different victory types, not just one and the culture, the science, and the tourism bonuses that scales with the districts encourages you to, again, build bigger cities, make sure they're closer together, and then it really encourages and incentivizes you to continue to send trade routes to those cities instead of international trade routes. Finally, this is really, really good when you talk about the electronics factory, which already has a six tile distance. I think it further really makes you consider your city placement and where you want to put most of these factories. So what was otherwise an underused district I think will become a lot more relevant as the Japan scales later on into the game. And while this may not be a picturesque warlord, I think Tokugawa is going to be a great addition and I really, really love his abilities and what he brings to the table. So for the people that were asking for a more contemporary take, while well, you will not be getting the Komenis by any chance, I think this is a great step into the contemporary era at least with Sword of Persia, plus 5 combat strength when attacking full health units, and then cities not founded by Nadir Shot receive plus 2 faith and plus 3 gold on domestic trade routes. This ability is fantastic for furthering what Cyrus already had with his surprise war rush. I think it's a bit more passive and not as militaristic, which is very ironic since this is a great commander's pack, but it is great for establishing trade routes, getting those units out and about with the further upgraded roads, and I think it synergizes so much more better, I would say, than what we previously got with the last pack. So I just wanted to zoom in for further detail. Here is the leader model, and I cannot stop gushing over how beautiful it looks. I think these are some of the best leader models, especially compared to the new Frontier Pass, and the last pass, or the pack rather, with the Great Diplomacy pack was very, very good when it came to leader models. I will cut them some slack there. But getting back to the Padi Deza, this is wonderful if you want to get back from your conquest, perhaps after the classical or medieval era, and then focus on building your domestic tourism and your cultural influence, because again, you have these pre-existing cities, are assuming you already captured an empire that you can get further gold and faith on, and probably is a great way to get your religion out too with that extra faith, who knows? But if you want to take reliquaries too, that is not a bad path for a religion. The last leader I'll be talking about today is Suleiman the Magnificent, which is a unique persona. And the ability for this is the Magnificent plus 15% science and culture when in a golden or heroic age, and then plus 4 combat strength when not in a golden age or a heroic age against civilizations who are also not in a golden age or a heroic age. 
Now, I do like these abilities because they pair very well with Ibrahim, the unique vizier or governor for the Ottomans, and the base game Civ, wow, it was interesting and dynamic, and it focused on siege engines, which is not a typical path most Civs go down in terms of military conquest strategies. I think it was a bit one-sided in terms of war. However, for development, you have a lot more options opened up to you now with the science and the culture, and I do like that they are not going for what they did with Lotoro and made a very specific ability for very specific situations with only getting a bonus, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, against civs who are already in a golden age. This is a much more consistent bonus because people aren't always going to be scoring golden ages and it's just a lot more realistic, I feel. And the plus four combat bonus is going to be great to start off with. I think the Ottomans had a much later mid-game conquest than many of the other civs. They had to build up a bit more to get that knight or to get that bombard in the Corsairs up. But this allows them to get their conquest rolling a lot earlier. And I really, really like that they gave this option for players that wanted to really get off their feet sooner rather than later. But again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want to check out my other video, which was really, really blowing up, and I appreciate all the feedback, I'm going to link it in the top right-hand corner of the video where I talk about the last portion of the New Leader Pass, which I mention a lot in this video, but I recommend checking it out because it is quite a banger, if not overly negative. I'm glad this video is a lot more positive. I'm glad we got to see the Leader abilities earlier, and they are looking very, very promising. While this was not per se a very militarist focused pack, I am excited to see what happens to the future of Civ with this. I think it's restored my confidence in the past and I really hope this was just a one-off blunder when it comes to DLC packs. I know you always have a bad day or perhaps for the launch they were just putting out their least developed civs and while that is an interesting strategy to say the least, I do appreciate that there is a lot more effort, I believe, at least in my opinion towards the new leaders that are being put out. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I will have a new video out on Saturday. I apologize for the mic quality. I am recording in a separate room for Thanksgiving. But thank you guys again so much for watching the channel and supporting me, and I love you guys. Peace.